Mother's Day yet. In Spain, dozens are dying every day. Countries are starting to take dramatic measures in response to this. Many are remembering the value of having borders after having forgotten for quite a while. Denmark, Poland, and the Czech Republic have all closed themselves off from outsiders, <laughs> and they're not likely to be the last countries to do that. In Iran, right. which could be the country hit hardest of all globally, the military has been called out to clear the streets. Last time we were joined by Dr. Brendan Carr, who's the chairman of emergency medicine at Mount Sinai Hospital. His analysis was so clear and so informative that we're happy to have him back tonight. Dr. Cord Carr joins us now. Doctor, thanks so much for coming on. Hi there, Tucker. Thanks for having me back. So we received uh, quite a bit of email um, about your appearance last night. And so we assembled just a, a list of pretty basic questions from our viewers. And I wonder if you would mind going through and answering them. I think it might be really helpful. So I'm going to start um, with a viewer called Beverly Holiday Price. And she says this, explain if you would the exact symptoms and when someone ought to seek emergency medical care. Uh, so this is a hard one. The, the exact symptoms are fever, cough, shortness of breath, and a lot of other things. The worrisome ones are fever, cough, shortness of breath, but people have minor symptoms too. As we said before, 80 plus percent of folks have very minor symptoms. Okay, and then the second part is, when do you need to seek care? The best rule of thumb is that, it, is that it's a lot like the flu. It feels a lot like the flu. So you get a little bit sick, you, you wait and see what direction you go, you take some medicine to see if you can feel better, as you're not getting better, that's when we think you reach out to a trusted source, you talk to someone over in telemedicine, you talk to your primary care doctor if you can talk to them. Uh, best not to go expose yourself to other folks. Uh, and if you're not getting better, that's when you go to the hospital. So you say shortness of breath. One of the things that causes shortness of breath is anxiety. And a lot of people are anxious right now and, and wondering if, if they're sick with this. Is there some way to tell if your shortness of breath is a medical problem? The answer is no, and wouldn't it be nice if it were? You know, you know. So one of the things we think yes. about a lot are um, what we can do to keep ourselves safe. People worry a lot about their chronic medical problems because they're being told this is for older adults and people have chronic medical problems are having the biggest challenge with this. Um, it is important right now more than ever to be really thoughtful about your rest, about your immune system, about taking care of yourself. Uh, and so it's hard to tell if it's your anxiety that's making you feel short of breath or um, if it's yes. a sickness, but it often comes with the other things. It comes with fevers, and it comes with the cough, and it comes with feeling feeling um, pretty terrible like you feel when you have the flu. Yeah, unmistakable probably. Marsha Jones wrote in to ask this. My husband, she writes, has COPD. Should he not go to work? Yeah, um, it's, so you, you, we're all watching as many, many mass gatherings get closed, and we're spending a lot of time talking about uh, flattening the curve is what the public health people say. So we talk about the fact that there is a spike coming of folks that have this disease, and one of the ways to decrease how many people have the disease is to not spend a whole lot of time near each other, sharing germs with each other. Yes. So not going to work is a pretty rational decision um, for someone who's got an underlying medical problem, but it's pretty rational for all of us to be really thoughtful about how much time we spend in places where we don't have to be, where we could transmit germs to each other. I work in a yeah. hospital. That's a we, we sit two seats apart from each other. We take all of our, we've moved all of our education our, and all of our meetings to video. It just is a safe, prudent thing to do. If you've got an underlying medical problem, all the better reason to do it. Here's a question I doubt as many people have. Carol Garcia writes, are there any home remedies available apart from washing your hands? Home remedies are hard. Keeping your home safe is, is, is really important, however. So making sure if someone is there who's, uh, who's infected, keeping them isolated to a room is a really good idea. Um, going into that room only when they are wearing a mask, so they're not coughing stuff into the air, is a really good idea. Wiping down areas that are common areas where the virus can sit on materials and you could touch it with your hand and then touch your mouth or touch your eye is a really good idea. There's all, the over-the-counter disinfectants work. It's, it's a lot, again, it's a lot like flu. It's pretty easy to kill with the regular stuff. We just have to be thoughtful about making sure that we don't breathe in somebody else's air, spend a whole lot of time in the room with them, or especially if you're in my line right. of work, we worry a lot. I put a breathing, I put someone to sleep and put a breathing tube into them, and I get mm, mucus and all kinds of things that sort of are coming up into the air. That's a high-risk thing. Yes. It's a much less high-risk thing to just be in a house with someone who's controlling their cough, coughing into their arm, washing their hands. Interesting. Uh,
Thanks so much. Dr. Carr, I really appreciate your coming on tonight. I know our viewers do as well. Thanks for Thank answering those questions. Of course. Thank you. Obviously, we appreciate everything the doctor just told us, and we believe it. You should, though, always consult your own doctor if you are feeling sick. So con contact a professional directly. Do not rely purely on what you see on television. We're acting against interest in telling you that, but it's true. So one reason America is scrambling to contain this pandemic is because our initial...